The Cavirondo district was held at Kissy by District Commissioner Spencer, with a police detachment of 10 to 30 police Ascari. Meanwhile, at Kasumu, there is a garrison of 90 men in G Company 4th King's African Rifles, 100 police Ascari, and a 130 volunteer town guard. Kasumu is vital, as it's the port on Lake Victoria that is on one end of the Ugandan Railroad, linking it to Nairobi and Mombasa. A German force from Bokuba, under Captain Wilhelmina Bock von Wolfingen, named Abdelinkt Bock, was a massive column for those early days. Captain Wolfingen was part of the Schutztrupp's Berlin staff and had been visiting the colony when hostilities broke out. He was able to mass a force quickly with 400 men under arms with a large non-combatant carrier support and was also comprised of 52 German volunteers, not part of the Schutzen Company. 266 Askaris in the 7th Field Company, 100 Rugga Rugga native warriors in support. Additional heavy support for the column came in three machine guns and a field artillery piece. It's doubtful Vorbrick was truly aware of this force's size and its coming actions as his focus was on the East African coast, Kilimanjaro area of operations, and raising new troops in August and September 1914. He simply calls it a small body. This massive column crossed into British East Africa on the east shore of Lake Victoria under escort from the German steamer Munza on the 5th of September. His first objective was the British Boma administrative building at Kisi. On the 9th of September, the column captured the village port of Karungu. When Karungu fell, British District Commissioner Spencer withdrew his police from Kisi to Wire Hill. With news the Germans had crossed the border, Nairobi called on the neighboring British Ugandan protectorate for aid. Uganda was already stretched thin, having sent an expedition to quell the Turkanan revolt. The protectorate scrambled and sent a total of four separate companies to the area, immediately dispatching C and D Company of the 4th King's African Rifles to Wire Hill to rally with G Company of the 4th King's African Rifles on the 11th of September, while the Reserve Company of the 4th King's African Rifles and a 90-man Ugandan police company were sent to Kindu. C, D, G companies of the 4th King's African Rifles were under the command of Captain Thornycroft and guided by Commissioner Spencer and his police Ascari, moved to retake Kissy. Arriving at 10.30 a.m. on the 12th of September, Captain Thornycroft deployed his men in the hills overlooking Kissy. The British were able to witness the German occupiers holding a celebratory parade in the village. The German parade was quickly fired upon by the elevated British Ascaris from extreme distance. The German artillery piece tried to fire on the British in the hills, but by the time it had fired a pair of ranging shots, the entire German field gun crew was cut down by C Company's Lieutenant Mussen's machine gun. The Germans attempted to man their other heaviest support weapons, but kept at bay by the British machine gun fire. Thornycroft at noon that day took half his company of Ascaris and attempted to roll the German flank. Pushing the enroaching Germans skirmishing towards the British, Thornycroft attempted to push back the Germans in the thick brush. He had somewhat managed to do so. The Germans backed across the stream that separated the hills from the village when he himself was shot when the rifle barrels from both sides were touching and firing point-blank at one another. This sudden point-blank fire caused the British to fall back across the river. For the majority of the day, both sides simply fired back at one another. In the afternoon, G Company and Spencer's police were pushed back as the European Germans crossed the stream in a rush charge. With the flank collapsing, Mussen has the British forces withdraw back to Wire Hill. That night, coincidentally, the reserve company, 4th King's African Rifles, arrived at Wire Hill. Back at Kissy, Wolfingen struggles to compare his success of driving off the British with his tactical losses. There are 89 German dead, and himself wounded. Half of his European volunteers were dead, charging through the open brush. His heavy support pieces are now oversized paperweights, the crews gone or heavily diminished. The Germans' black powder firearms giving away their positions were the cited as the cause for the heavy losses. The native auxiliaries, Rugga Ruggas, and carriers are panicked. 
Another action could see them flee into the bush. Wolfingen opts to fall back, executing the withdrawal in the early morning. The dead and wounded are left for the British to find in the village. When the British enter Kissy at noon on the 13th of September, the British record over 100 German personnel. British casualties totaled 7 dead and 14 wounded. For a time, some of the local tribes saw these actions as an omen to a prophecy about the British being overthrown led to a rise in native insurgent attacks at Homa and Karunangu being carried out. These stocks of goods were restored and shipped, and this movement seems to have been tired by October 1914. Meanwhile, the British weren't focused on putting this native unrest down. They were instead focused on chasing down Umtai Lung Bok.